On this episode, a stressful flight to Canada, lots of smoke, and the most expensive avgas. The next morning, the weather was brutal. The wind was gusting up to 50 knots, so we had a few hours before it was good enough for takeoff. I took this time to prepare for the flight and call Canadian Customs to notify them of my arrival. For anyone who's done this, you know what a pain it can be. I waited more than 40 minutes for a customs officer to pick up. Anyways, once that's done, we're off to the airport. A glimpse of sun was a good sign. And the same as Kulusuk to pay the airport fees, you get to go up and visit the Nuke Tower. How yes. about that? <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks very much for your help Thank and you. uh, see you next time, maybe. Yes, hopefully. Yeah. So, very friendly staff here at uh, Nuke Airport. I had a fun time. Um, now, just heading to the plane, do a pre flight, get ready, and off to Canada. Four hour flight, a bit of a headwind, and the worst weather is actually here. Uh, which is just basically the wind is a factor. It's about uh, 25 gusting 37 is what it was just a few minutes ago, but it's uh, direct uh, down a runway So should be okay Okay, so I got my immersion suit on again I'm Just strapping in And we'll get the clearance shortly And be on our way. Looks like the wind has died down Lima Yankee Bravo, Uniform Sulu, Roger. Runway news 22, wind 220 magnetic 21 knots. QNH 1021, temperature 8 and time 5, 6 and a half. Lima Uniform Sulu entering runway 22. Lima Uniform Sulu, Roger. And Lima Uniform Sulu taking off runway 22, All right turn on. We are good to go. Let's give her Canada. Takeoff power is set, there's speed alive. All in the green. And in the milk we go. Flaps coming up. All set the autopilot on. And we are gonna turn on route. So GPS nav to our first waypoint which is 65 degrees north, 57 degrees west. Okay, it looks like we're in uh, between layers now. And uh, yeah, it's clear up above the clouds. So uh, looks like we're looking good for at least the first part of the flight. There could be some clouds uh, later on, about one hour on our route. The main goal is to stay out of icing. Other than that, it's uh, really not an issue. Turbulence isn't an issue. There's no uh, thunderstorms on our way. Okay, Lima Yankee Bravo Uniform Missoula is cleared to Frobisher Bay uh, via 65 North, 57 West. And can you please uh, spell the next waypoint? Yeah, the next is Nelty, November, Alpha, Lima, Delta, India. So with this routing, we'll actually cut a little bit into information, Roger. Uh, Gander Oceanic Airspace, but Canada has cleared uh, me direct, so I'm good. Uh, the only thing, there's a restriction for uh, Oceanic Airspace. According to the rules, you have to have an HF radio to enter that airspace. I do not have an HF radio, and therefore I have to stay in uh, domestic airspace. So we just reached uh, flat level 100, which is our cruising altitude. And it's accelerating uh, to speed. It took us uh, 20 minutes to reach this level. Let's set our cruise power. About 2300 RPM and roughly 8 gallons per hour. So here we are, approaching uh, Gander airspace. I did put on my uh, oxygen mask uh, as I checked my uh, blood oxygen. I was a bit on the low side. The Gander radio, very good afternoon. Lima Yankee, Bravo, Uniform Zulu. Gander radio, Gander radio. 
Cessna, Lima Yankee, Bravo Uniform Zulu, good afternoon. Uh, I try contacting Gander Radio, but uh, no answer. Roger, you can also try Epic Radio on the 123.275. Gander Radio, Gander Radio, Cessna, Lima Yankee, Bravo Uniform Zulu, Quebec Radio, uh, very good day, no joy there. Let's try the other one, one, two, three. A small uh, five five. All right, guys. So we are well within uh, Canadian airspace, and I've been trying to reach all the frequencies, and even tried to contact some other aircraft air to air, but nobody's answering me. So uh, and, uh, we are expecting an Aldi in about 50 minutes from now. Uh, hopefully I'll get a hold of somebody soon because it's been already 45 minutes since my contact with Duke. So even though radio communication is not required in uncontrolled airspace that we're flying through here, I still wanted to make sure that at least someone in Canada is aware of my location. So I tried several times contacting other aircraft on a common frequency, and finally managed to get a hold of someone to relay my position report. Uh, good day, we have a relay for a Cessna. See my Yankee Bravo uniform Zulu. So, so the situation, I received weather from Iqaluit, and the actual weather is not so good. It's only a half a uh, statute mile, overcast 300 with light drizzle and mist. So, of course, we have about uh, two hours left in the flight. Hopefully that weather improves. If not, we'll need to look at our alternate options. Uh, so, one more thing we can do, since we entered the uh, Canadian airspace, is uh, set up our PFD to show not millibars, but inches of mercury. Since uh, we use that system here in North America. So, there it is, guys. Canada. Getting closer to Iqaluit, the weather did improve a little. The visibility was still worse than forecasted, but at least now it was good enough to make the approach for landing. Although I only spotted the runway pretty much at the minimum altitude. Let's put the gear down. Yes, undercarriage mixture prop. 500. That's 20. That will be our landing configuration. And I have a uh, visual. Pull up. Pull up. Pull up. Yeah, those are low ceilings. Pretty much right at minima. And Bravo Uniform Zulu, uh, where can I park my airplane? I need to get fuel from Uksuk also to clear customs. So far this has definitely been the most stressful flight of the trip. And not only for me. The online flight tracker stopped showing my position about halfway to Canada. So my family who were tracking my flight online also got a bit of a scare. All right, so that's it. We've cleared customs. That was very quick and a uh, very nice lady. Uh, friendly. Uh, just checked my passport, asked a few questions. It took about uh, five minutes. And now we're gonna go taxi a bit uh, forward up ahead somewhere by the tower and get out gas there. There's no phone connection. Or at least I can't get registered to a network, which is kind of stupid, so I'm absolutely without any connection so Canada so far is no connection no contact on the radio and no contact on the phone I'm gonna have to find a way to file a flight plan to Kujuak if we're going there today so we'll see about that so one more update uh, it's tough to get any a hotel, basically any of the small towns. So far, no luck. I can't either can't get a hold of somebody, or they don't have rooms. So uh, yeah, and the weather in Kujuak is getting dodgy this evening. So I decided to spend the night here uh, in Iqaluit. Uh, I already parked my plane here by the FBO, so I'm just gonna grab my things. The FBO is calling around for hotel rooms here in the Kalowitz, so I do hope they have a hotel room for me here. 
otherwise, I don't know, I'll sleep on a couch in the FBO. Iqaluit, the capital of the Canadian territory of Nunavut. Over 7,000 people live here, majority of whom are Inuits. They've been inhabiting the area for thousands of years, but only quite recently did it become a settlement when the Americans built an airbase here in 1942. Since then, it has grown to what it is today, an administrative and cultural center of Nunavut. I had mixed feelings when I came here. I was very excited to be in Canada, but walking around and experiencing Iqaluit, it's not quite what I expected, and unfortunately, not in a good way. People here didn't seem to care much for cleanliness. There was garbage on the streets, garbage in the rivers, garbage around people's homes. Abandoned boats, abandoned cars, run-down and broken things just left where they are. Definitely a stark contrast compared to Greenland. Nonetheless, looking around the landscapes of the bare arctic tundra, to me, it's still a very beautiful place. Alright guys, so this is pretty sweet. I uh, chose the cheapest place uh, in Iqaluit. It's a bed and breakfast, basically a house with uh, a lot of rooms and uh, I'm the only one here. So I, I have the whole house to myself. Check this out. Not bad at all. The next day, sun was shining and it was time to continue our journey. Back at the airport, I filed a flight plan, paid a hefty FBO fees and prepare for the flight, just as this C-17 Globemaster taxis out for takeoff. Clear prop! Today we're heading straight south to Shefferville, Quebec. A four and a half hour flight. Calot Radio, very good morning. Lima Yankee, Bravo, Uniform Zulu at the FBO. Uh, request the uh, latest uh, airport advisory and uh, ready to copy IFR to Charlie Yankee, Kibo Lima. Calot Radio, CAN 216, start up on the ramp here, looking for IFR to. Uh, Lights. Uh, rank and light. Camera, action. Montreal Center, good morning, Lima Yankee, Bravo, Uniform Zulu, Airborne from Iqaluit, Iqaluit, Heat Departure Crossing, 1000. Lima Yankee, Bravo, Uniform Zulu, Montreal Center, good day. After takeoff, the weather is great, and we get a few scenic glimpses of the Canadian tundra. But just 30 minutes into the flight, it all starts to change. It seems like that's all the sightseeing we're gonna get. Originally, I planned a different routing with more stops, but since most of northern Quebec is covered by bad weather for the next few days, it's just not feasible to wait around. Okay, so there was some uh, some cumulus clouds in the area, and I just climbed 12,000 feet to uh, stay above the layer, so I can avoid visually. Worked out pretty good, and. Uh, Still a bit of a heading to the right to avoid some higher buildups off to our left. But yeah, for now 12,000 feet. As you can see, I got my uh, oxygen mask on once again. Don't want to uh, suffer from uh, hypoxia. I lose my uh, judgment. Uh, two hours, 40 minutes to go. Uh, there seems to be some weather off to our left side, so I took uh, about 10 degrees to the right to avoid that area. Looks pretty good up ahead. So we'll continue this heading for a while and uh, see how it plays out. Since we're uh, within gliding distance from land, I want to take off this immersion suit because yeah, it's really uncomfortable, you know. It's, uh, it gets hot and uh, sweaty, so I'm gonna try and take it off. Somehow. Really not something you want to sit in for hours. Okay, I got the suit off. Uh, it's a mess with all the stuff. Yeah, hard to uh, keep everything organized when there's so many things that I'm carrying. Probably more than I should, but 
Oh well. It fits. Taking it. We are just north of Kujuan. Now I'm descending to 10,000 feet because we're in uh, a layer anyways. And uh, this could also be uh, haze or smoke uh, from the forest fires because they do smell uh, a forest fire and there are a lot of uh, activated uh, warning areas. This time of year wildfires are common, but 2023 was a record-setting year for the most area burned in Canada's recorded history. With Quebec being the leader with 5.2 million hectares or 13 million acres burned. I will keep the flight plan and I will call you once on the ground. Uh, Alright, so we just uh, cancelled our IFR and we continue visually. The weather looks good. And I will descend lower so we can enjoy uh, these uh, beautiful uh, landscapes. Chevrolet traffic, Cessna, Lima Yankee, Bravo, Uniform, Zulu, 25 miles to the north, 3,500 inbound for landing, Chevrolet. So guys, here I am inside Shefferville Airport. It's a Saturday, there's nobody here, and I made a mistake of going through this door, which I can go in, but I can't get out. So now I'm stuck inside the airport. Well, I can go outside, but on the land side, and I can't get to my plane anymore. So I'm trying to contact somebody to come. And nobody's picking up. So this is interesting. Uh, let's go try and find somebody. Eventually, I did find a person to let me back onto the apron and to ask if they have Avgas available. Uh, they have Avgas here. Yes, they do. They sell them by the barrel. And guess how much a barrel costs? $1,200. Who charges $1,200 for a barrel of we'll Avgas? Ridiculous. So I'm just uh, have my two jerry cans. I'm gonna fill those up, or I'm gonna put them in a plane. That gives me a three-hour range plus reserves. A three-hour range from Shefferville gives me very limited options for reachable airports that have Avgas. There's Kujuwak, one and a half hours north, but that's in the opposite direction. Goose Bay, two hours east also not in the preferred direction, and Setil, two and a half hours south, in the preferred direction, but with bad weather. After refueling the plane, I decided to spend the night here, in hopes that the weather will improve down south by the next day. It was a very peculiar sight riding down the streets of Shefferville, with the sun kind of tinted by the smoke-filled sky. So this is what $175 gets you in Shefferville. Shefferville is a fairly new town established in 1954 by the Iron Ore Company of Canada to support the mining of rich iron ore deposits that we saw in our approach earlier. In 1982, due to economic challenges, as well as difficulties of mining and permafrost, forced the Iron Ore Company to cease operations. Most of the town's 4,000 residents left as a result, and now only around 200 remain, giving the place a bit of a ghost town feel. I ride around for a while and head back to the guest house to do some planning for tomorrow. I'm really hoping to head down south to Setil, so let's see if Mother Nature will play along. <laughs> 